ServiceNow Knowledge Store Team is sponsored by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. We're back. Good morning, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. We're here at Knowledge 14. Robert Fedorik is here. He's with, uh, with Hyatt Hotels and, uh, and a, a participant in the, the hackathon that's going on here. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, it's good to be back. Yeah, so, uh, so tell us what's going on in the, in the hackathon this year. Um, well, what's going on is uh, about 800, 800 times more the uh, applicants, or was it 800% increase in applicants? Um, I think we started off with 46 teams that showed up compared to last year's, oh, well, the FruDevCon had four, and, and then uh, the original hackathon had five or six and so at least wow. 10 times as many. And um, it was just crazy. As you walk in, there's like a just gigantic crowd of people. Nobody knows anybody. There's all sorts of teams. It's like, it felt like a trading floor. Everybody's like, over here, we want people. Over here, we got ideas. <laughs> Where's <laughs> it going on? Across the street or? Yeah, it was over at West. It was on the second floor. Uh -huh. um, and they just had this big old room and everybody came in and yelling and screaming. And it was really exciting. And when did it end? Midnight. At midnight, so yeah. it went till midnight. Yeah. There was, uh, it was uh, a little less time this year. It was eight hours instead of 12. And so since it usually takes me about seven and a half hours to get in the swing of things, it was a, it was a little bit tighter this year. <laughs> so what were you working on? Um, we did an app to help quantify and automate social media campaigns. So the problems with, uh, with large brand sensitive companies today is that they're, they're counting on their marketing teams to push out good quality material to the widest possible network. They have absolutely no way of quantifying these things. And just now we're starting to see apps enter the ecosystem where you can actually quantify these things and assess your reach and, and then automate the tweets uh, and, 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 uh, and curate the content that you actually want to send through the social networks. Um, but for the people who aren't on those cutting edge tools, they're doing it in email. Right? And then even if they do have these tools, they're off kind of segregated in their own little silo that the rest of the enterprise can't really engage with them on. And so what we did is we put that all on our favorite platform for service management, ServiceNow. And, um, and so now it's just the marketing team is just another team on the platform that you can engage. So you might be in the facilities management group and you want an internal social campaign to tell people like, oh, we got this, you know, we got this brand new facility service, ram it through the social media campaign. They'll collect all the, all the content that they want to curate to send through the social networks. And then they have a, a squad of people who have volunteered their social credentials uh, to automate the tweets and it just, it just goes out. It's magic, it's automated. So wait, this, so this is a good example because a lot of times people, you know, ServiceNow touches on a lot of different areas, right? Mm -hmm. HR, facilities, not HR software, facilities, but it's not facility software, right, uh, et cetera. So this is an application that coordinates, it sounds like, the social media activities within the company. Yeah. Right, it's not doing the tweeting, for example. Um, yes, it is. It is doing the tweeting, okay. Yeah, so, so. Well, one, of the th one of the things we had was, uh, when we were talking to, uh, to uh, the people who were giving us the use case, they said, it's really hard, you know, I, I, I create an email with all the stuff I'd like people to tweet, and then I send them an email with the word please on it. Like, please do this. <laughs> and then they copy paste and, and into Yeah, and, and I'm like, why do you, that's, I mean, that's, I mean, even, even the best intentioned person would be like, yeah, I'd be happy to tweet that stuff with you, but I work an eight to 10 hour day, and then I got kids when I go home, I'm not thinking about the, oh, I was supposed to tweet that a week ago, I better do it now, now I look like a dummy because it's a week old. Right, right. right? And so um, we allow people to kind of opt into the social, to the company social network, and so if I opt in, it says, okay, Robert, what's your Twitter, Twitter handle and your, and your password, it's all encrypted, and then um, the, I trust the company to tweet on my behalf, or I'm tweeting on the company's behalf, rather, but I'm, tr I'm trusting the company to do it in an automated fashion. Okay, so you've integrated with what, with, the, with the Twitter API? Is that, is that yep, what you did? Yep, we did it with Twitter, and that was our okay. kind of preliminary use case, and then the next step would be obviously LinkedIn, because then you could, once you have LinkedIn, and if, if, if somebody, you just imagine this for a second, right? If, if you had, if you had it, uh, if the tool was pushing um, updates to LinkedIn, and a company said, that's really cool, I like that, or a person, Jeff Frick, you like this, is, is uh, Cube TV a ServiceNow customer? We could probably check that by running it through our ServiceNow company database, right? And instantly you're a lead. 
because you're at a company that liked content that we pushed through the network, and we could determine that just really easy by first sending it out to the network and then scraping the data afterwards. That's great. So okay, and then you say you, sorry Jeff, but you say you good. curate the content afterwards. Correct. So talk about that a little bit. Okay, so uh, the person who gave us the use case, um, it was just, you could just, you could just feel the frustration because of all the stuff you want to tweet at a conference like this, I mean, there's just really pieces of valuable information uh, everywhere you look. Uh, and, and she's basically got to put this in an Excel sheet or an email or a text or in her head and then, and then write that all out in an email and then, and then send it out to the world. And so the curator, the curator component basically says, okay, I got, a, I got this really cool blog post that's going to be uh, really handy when we do our next discovery upgrade or when Fred drops that Kanban bomb. Uh, in his in his keynote speech, and uh, and then so once that's done, I want to just want to drag that out of an archive, not an email, like a maintainable, rateable, retireable archive. Attach that to the uh, to the to the campaign that I want to do. Hit launch and boom, tweets, LinkedIn, Facebook, G plus. So talk a little bit about just the, it, everyone wants innovation, right? And mm -hmm. what you're talking about is extremely innovative, and you just did it in in a day or eight hours or yeah, however yeah, many just, hours. just did it. Yeah. Just did it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm curious in terms of how it was spec. And you said there was a there was a person there that kind of had mm -hmm. the use case. You know, how much of that had they really thought through? How much of it did you write down before you sure. implemented it? How much did you just kind of start putting bits and pieces in and then yeah. start adding, adding, adding? And then, so good. At, but then I also am curious, how does this whole hackathon thing? relate to actually innovating on your day-to-day -day job and, and being able to do things like what sounds like a phenomenal application in a very short period of time with a ton of value. I mean, that's really the essence of the hackathon is that you don't come to, you don't come to hackathon to, uh, to marginally increase the efficiency of your notifications, right? Because that's not going to win. Uh, so everybody's, everybody that goes to hackathon is either there to try something new and interesting and fun, and then there's a bunch of people that are trying to actually solve uh, solve a, a big business problem, if you will. Um, and, and both are really interesting to watch. As a matter of fact, one of the entrants in the hackathon this year is a, uh, a multi-user dungeon. It's like a game. It's all happening through the ServiceNow platform. Um, but for others, you almost have to, have, you, you almost have to en uh, enjoy the smell of garbage, right? Uh, so you go looking for it, and you're like, what's, just, what's garbage around here, right? And the idea of like keeping all this media I don't want to push through a social network in an email. That's garbage smell all over it, right? So let's let's just let's just solve that problem, and let's make somebody's day a little bit better at the end of the day. And that's what innovation is all about, really. Is is either taking something that's, you know, it's kind of BS to deal with, and flipping it over on its head so it's it's cool to deal with. Right, right. It's fun to From deal garbage with. to now, an asset, really. Yeah. Now, what's your background? Are you a, are you a programmer? Are you a developer? Everything I've learned about uh, programming in JavaScript, I learned in ServiceNow. Oh, really? I've, I've always kind of been an ITSM guy. My first job out of school, somebody just took me in, showed me the ropes on whatever, whatever the tool of the day was back then. And, uh, and I've been doing that ever since. And I was lucky enough to fall into the ServiceNow game really early. OK, so, yeah. but so you're sort of a, a, a nouveau developer, right? It's like, I guess so. I pretend yeah. to be a developer. OK, but, yeah. so, but, but this is what's interesting to mm -hmm. me, because the ServiceNow platform expands the number of people who can be developers, mm -hmm. right? But, but knowing what you know and understanding that you're not, you know, a hardcore Python programmer mm -hmm. or, or you know Java developer, but but you understand that world, right? You yes, I do. I can speak world. their language. Right. And, yeah. What's what's the experience and uh, difference between mm -hmm. those two worlds? I wonder if you could sort of clarify that to the best of your knowledge. Well, you need you need both. Um, I mean, there's just no getting around. If you have a really, really hot solution in service now, you, you have to have somebody who, who takes, who makes the magic happen, right? It's just that the magic is not exposed to the end user. And what service now is exceptionally good at, what Fred Letty is exceptionally good at, is pushing the envelope of what can we get the tool to do that's magic versus having to have a, a, a coder build custom UIs all the time. Like, did you guys see his keynote and his yeah. document management? Yeah. Magic. Yeah, yeah. So, so give me a specific example, uh, if you could, of, of, of sort of where the ServiceNow magic uh, uh, occurs versus what you might have to do in a conventional programming environment. Um, well, uh, take the example Fred used today with the, uh, with the uh, uh, papers online, right? And now, now he's got an interface that doesn't even require me. So today, at the companies I work at, somebody says, gosh, Rob, it would be really nice if I had a tuition reimbursement form. Okay, what do you want to track, 
right? Well, we want to track the person's name. I can figure that out for you, but I'll put that on there, right? I'm collecting all their fields. I'm having all these meetings with them to determine their needs. And it's, it's two people's time, and it's an expensive person's time right. to, to get it done. When in fact, we could have just taken one person's time. They know what fields they are. Give them an interface that's easy for them to use. They put the fields on that they want, the pictures on that they want. Tell, let them decide where it appears in the catalog of services. Then you don't need a guy like me around. At least for that. That's to say, but then do you have to come in and kind of connect anything to really make it make it work? Yeah, it's almost like being a shepherd of features now. You know, it's not it's not like I'm. Uh, um, it's not like I have to build everything. The stuff that I have to build is less and less, so I can concentrate on richer, broader features. Whereas the stuff that isn't as rich, isn't as broad, isn't as deep, can be handled by people that only need shallow. Um, simple features. Right. So in a world without service now, business line has a requirement. They, mm -hmm. they go to IT, you know, go to maybe the head of application development or whomever their liaison is, say, I need this, you know, project. I got to get this, you know, developed. I need some coding. Yeah. All right, this is what I need. Yeah. Say, okay, they scope it out. You know, they maybe do some, you know, stencil. They mm -hmm. they do some wireframes. They, they just, you know, describe the functionality, write the requirements doc, blah, 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 and then somebody goes off and program. Yeah, that's already, I don't know what you're, we're, okay. I mean, we, we, right. we're already lost, right? Okay, right. That's a crazy so, big process. So that, but that's, that's the de rigueur, yeah. for, that's how it works yeah. today, and 90% of the companies out yeah. there. Okay. And then what happens is they get, they, 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 they probably select a, an industry specific app, right? And then you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta get all the different expertises for all the different industry apps that you yep. gotta buy. They don't really connect well together unless you have to pay for even more expensive resources to do all the separate integrations, right? Um, and then what happens, and this is, this is the really the part that I don't think a lot of people clue into when you have that, that ecosystem, but it just really pisses me off, is that the customers have to find out how to navigate the, the entire service model, right? So if, I, if, you, if you need to go to facilities, well, you go to this system and you log in with hopefully the same username and password, but probably not and then you go in there and you pick whatever you need to do, hit, hit the request, and then you go over to our onboarding system and you do da 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 and then you go over to our whatever system and you're going from system to system to system. What do we care, right? We're IT or we're the business. But our poor customers are like, gosh, who do I got to talk to today? They got to keep it in their heads, which of the 60, 70, 80 services that I want to consume, where do I go to get it? And what if they're all linked together? Like I, I, I would hate to consider the day of, uh, I, I'd hate to, to, to imagine a world without service now and I had to do onboarding. Mm. Like what am I going to do? I'm going to email all 80, all 80 teams that are involved in getting somebody ramped up, especially right. in a world more complex where we're getting more and more and more apps and more and more and more security concerns and segregated data and all this stuff. You're talking about, yeah. okay, hey, we're live. Yeah. <laughs> you know, start using it. Yeah. <laughs> Training session today. Mm -hmm. Here's it, okay. Now, describe, um, a, a world that you're in, where ServiceNow exists, how, how would that sort of interaction that I described be different? Well, I think ServiceNow is just a way to kind of get all these services collaborating together because prior to ServiceNow, we lived in this world where it's like, it was an ITSM tool, it was made for IT, and that's really all that the, 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 all the people really thought about. And maybe if you're lucky, you got some forward thinking company that would, oh, let's do SharePoint, or maybe we'll get an open source. Um, an open source business management slash workflow management, request management tool, and we'll get some extraordinarily expensive talent in. I mean, even more expensive than ServiceNow talent, relatively, because there's like five or 10 in the world, right? And then they would build uh, those applications themselves. What ServiceNow does is it just, it really um, allows people, and not necessarily, like I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge coder, I'm just, I'm just a guy. I've been in the ITSM tool industry for 10 years. I'm, I'm, I'm a perfectly average IT guy but they give it me a tool like that, and it's like I, all these components are so easy to use and interact with. And now I can start thinking about, look, there's not really no difference between what an HR team needs out of this or what a facilities team needs out of this. What they really need is a way to say, input the, uh, um, get records coming in, and uh, allow me to process a workflow, and then where I'm, where I'm able to, allow me to automate that workflow. So it's not even people doing stuff, it's just, gets to a certain point in the workflow and then the machines do the So Rob, we're, we're, the we're stuff. Uh, so tight on time, getting oh, the, okay. the hook, but I want to I wanna ask you because one of the things that, that Jeff and I have been talking about and frankly struggling with a little bit is, is and when I read the, the, the Gartner Magic Quadrant mm -hmm. on IT service management tools, you know, I see, I, I'm trying to squint through. I see things like, oh, you know, the, this, this tr legacy company has, you know, cloudified, so now they, you, can, you, can, you can do it as a service. Uh, mm -hmm. They got mobile support, blah, 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 blah. 
but it feels like ServiceNow is different. Um, in your, the way you're speaking in terms of you know, the business focus mm -hmm. uh, seems different. You've been in the business for 10 years. Um, are we talking about you know, the legacy companies I don't know how else to say it, putting lipstick on a pig? Is it legitimate what they're doing? Is it just sort of a new you know, product? Or is ServiceNow really that different? I'd say ServiceNow is just really that different. I mean, it's, it's the only one that, that looks at it as, I mean, there, all the other tools will say, IT is a service, and let's concentrate on IT service management. And then all ServiceNow does is kick the IT off of it. <laughs> right? And it makes the components right. simpler and easier to use. Right, right, it recognizes right. that the types of work we do are the same. Somebody needs to consume something from you. That something has some kind of process, or as Fred, <laughs> Fred showed us today, maybe no process. Yeah. Um, but it's still a way to quantify our work, quantify the requests that are coming. So it's nuanced, but uh, if, uh, to hear from an IT practitioner, you know, that to me is the ultimate. You can hear the vendors, you know, you know, and now I'll tell you one thing. I got to tell you something else too, thing. is that sir, IT is now a weapon in business, right? As before it was just like, oh God, it was a dead weight, right? Come on, <laughs> IT, <laughs> come on, all right. Um, you know, and just, come on with the rest of us. We're trying, to get, we're trying to get over there, come on, IT. And now it's, now it's a weapon, so the whole business needs to get somewhere, right? Facilities management is lagging behind now. IT's, okay, let's get you off that paper, right, those paper forms. Let's push you into a real workflow engine. Let's integrate you with the rest of the business services, like onboarding, like room meeting finders, like the people that won the innovation of the year, right? Let's integrate that all together and have one big business solution. And now, uh, now uh, service now and IT is the machete that cuts through all the, all the stuff in the way of the business. Awesome. I like Rob, that. The Rob machete. Fedor, great. It's always good to hear the <laughs> IT practitioner, you know, the, the voice of the customer. Thanks, so Thanks very much for coming on, on the, the Cube. Front line. All right, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest. This is the Cube. We're live from Moscone, ServiceNow Knowledge 14. We'll be right back.